I was really happily surprised how good my last video was received and I got so many messages from makers, some engineers talking about my schematics and, and even the usual people that just got hyped about electric longboards. So thank you to everyone for the very nice comments, I really appreciate them. I even received some requests to review electric longboards from companies like this one right here. So this is a sponsored video, so I only received the product itself, nothing else. My opinion will be 100% honest and if something sucks and something breaks, I will tell you guys. So I'm going to review this product with you and we'll see together if this board is really worth its $418 price tag. That's 370 euros. First up, 370 euros, that's quite a competitive price and there is not much I've written that could compare to it. The nearest thing price-wise I used was the Xiaomi M365, a quite nice electric scooter with 600 watts, but this thing definitely tops that. Let's start off. The design. It looks very simple. It only has this black metal box with the quite big hub motors inside the 90mm urethane wheels. The deck has a slight drop and a very strong concave. Most people won't even notice that it's an electric longboard on first sight. The remote is a booster board clone. It has the usual scroll wheel design that I really like. The board has on its black metal box a charging port and a on off switch. The remote has two buttons, one for selecting the speed mode and one to show the board's battery and turning the remote on and off. I like the design. It's simple, it's clean. The only bad thing about this design is the weight being so far at the back that carrying the board around can get quite annoying. The specs. The reel went for mostly very commonly used components with the board. You can probably find most of these components on AliExpress and other sites. So repairability will probably be good for makers since all of the parts are fairly standard. But using very standard parts that are already on the market out of inventing everything on your own is actually good since they can really focus on picking some of the best budget components. And they did. The motors deliver some very smooth power and the torque is never enough to throw you off the board but enough to push you up hills with up to 20% incline and probably even more. That's 7.5 kilograms from the board and around 90 kilos for me with my backpack and everything. Every single hill in my city the sport could climb up, no problem. So the motor controller delivers some quite high face amps, which equals pretty good torque at the wheel. But the battery current, so the actual power of the board, is pretty low since this board has only a 20 cell battery pack. With in my case some cheap 18650 cells with 2 amp hours. But you can also buy the board with better cells. And I would honestly recommend that since 2 amp hour batteries are pretty outdated and there are already 3.5 amp hour batteries out there. So maybe go for the more expensive option. I think it's definitely worth it. The results of this low power is the ability to have a good startup torque but once you ride around 10 km per hour the power limit is already reached and now the torque declines rapidly which results in a pretty slow sluggish top end power and reaching full speed of the board takes quite a while which is 40 km an hour on this board and I measured that and that is actually possible. I got thir 37 kilometers an hour of maximum speed and that's GPS so 39 kilometers an hour is definitely possible with this board. So I would say brake test was somewhat okay, it was a little bit long but I think only the last like uh, 5 kilometers an hour were like the, the longest strip so you could easily jump off that in the end. The ESC motor controller has a built-in receiver with a small sticky antenna that gets stick to your battery. The reception of this thing was never a problem and the range of the remote is also fine. I never had any issues with the remote connection. The brakes are quite strong and decelerating feels safe and smooth. 
even though I would have preferred some higher torque braking for emergency stops where you usually want to brake as fast as possible even if it means that you have to jump off the board in the last few seconds but usually I prefer some very very high torque braking. The board has some quite nice safety features like you can't turn off the board's remote while the board is still moving and the remote warns you and vibrates when for example you ride up a steep hill with like 25% in the battery left and the battery voltage sags so low that the board needs to limit the power output or when you have the board fully charged and now use the regenerative braking riding down a steep hill and the battery would be overcharged so the remote then starts vibrating and warning you that it needs to shut off the board soon to prevent damage to the battery any board out there will shut off if you overcharge it or under discharge it of course but this board warns you before it shuts off this 10s 2p 4 amp hours 36 volt battery got me around 13 km of range with average riding speed of 25 km an hour in a very hilly environment that's around 11 watt hours per kilometer in my tests riding pretty slow at just 25 km an hour 13 km was definitely possible the battery has a built-in bms with a little bit of balancing so the board should at least last you a few hundred cycles i'm guessing around 1000 maybe or even more so the battery definitely shouldn't fail on this thing but when commuting with this board keep in mind that the battery is the limiting factor here of this thing when it comes to power so you will definitely feel a decrease in power maybe even a top speed decrease with less than 50 percent of the battery left the top speed is 40 kilometers an hour and i was even able to reach the top speed with 80 percent battery left so the values they claim for the board are definitely true generally i have a feeling that all their specs on their website are quite honest maybe even too honest a bit like here for example with a few minor issues like what do you even define as a minor issue and as a reason why the hub motors have the magnets and the urethane as one part they write that from the high temperature your magnets get destroyed and this way you can replace the urethane and the magnets quite easily which is all true but in my testing the motors never even got close to being so hot that the permanent magnets will be permanently damaged and thus would get destroyed which would happen at around 90 degrees and even after intensive uphill riding the motors only had around 50 degrees on the outside so i disassembled the complete board as good as i can and looked for potential issues everywhere i looked at this board from a engineering perspective basically but there were no real issues my esc was a little weirdly mounted with a way too long screw which was put in crookedly and didn't really make sense but electrically and mechanically speaking this is an okay design everything on this board is pretty much waterproof from the inside every pcb is coated or protected and from the outside there is a very thick neoprene strip around the case and i've been riding this thing in the rain with some nice mud guards that can be easily removed and fit almost on every e-ball even on this real ball i will release this design soon but yeah i rode this thing in the rain and it seems to be okay they use two rs bearings on the front so they definitely know what they are doing and use some waterproof bearings right there and there weren't any issues with water getting in i opened this thing up after a ride in the rain and there was absolutely no water in there so i think this is pretty rainproof at least you can ride this thing in the rain don't throw it into water because that will probably destroy it anyway it seems to be a pretty reliable setup one thing I should mention, while yes, the whole rotor of the motor, so the magnets are stuck to the wheel and all the magnets need to be replaced if the knee wheel needs to be replaced. Speaking from experience, you don't really need to replace the urethane wheels. They usually last insanely long. I have some wheels that I rode for over a thousand kilometers. Like uh, I can't even measure the decrease of the radius of the wheels. They are still the same size. They wear off really slowly. Right feel. The board has a quite stiff deck with only a bit of flex but not nearly enough to absorb any real shocks from the street. 
the wheels are 90 mm urethane wheels feel quite stiff and grippy but are big enough so that you can ride over almost anything. The board has an overall raw and budget ride feel. It feels like a very normal longboard actually. And I think that is definitely good enough to get around the city. Just not for very long rides since your ankles will hurt. Conclusion. Who is this board for? This board is definitely not the, for the people who want a smooth ride quality. The deck is too stiff. This board is not for the people that want to shred along the streets. This board is for everyone that's not fully committed yet to making the jump to a more powerful premium board, but still want to experience the freedom that riding around on an electric longboard brings. It's for the kid that has to wait 15 minutes for a bus just to go home from the train station and could shave off 20 minutes of its daily commute. It's for those kind of people that just want a little investment but a big impact on their life. This board is for quick trips, short commutes and like endless little fun adventures every now and then. Where do you mainly see the difference between this and like a very very expensive board? You will mainly see the difference comparing this to like a boosted board in acceleration, braking, range, power loss when the battery is low, your ankles will hurt after a long trip because there's no dampening, reliability and usually service when something breaks. On cheaper boards you could also see a lack of refinement and a lack of testing and quality control. But I haven't seen any signs of poor quality control on this board and everything just looks good enough to last a few thousand kilometers. And I wrote this thing for maybe 100 to 200 kilometers for this video. I still haven't had any issues, no rattling, nothing. So yeah, I can actually recommend you guys this board. It's an okay board. You're not getting anything for free, you're not getting anything for insanely cheap right here. It's just 370 euros and the board is definitely worth its price. So I hope you enjoyed this review. If you did, leave a like. Next video will probably be my anti-spark or something. And I will have another review on the line coming up soon. And we'll build a electric bike this summer. There will be some very very fast electric vehicles coming in the future. So I hope I see you in the next video. Thank you so much for watching. Ciao!